Hello, Internet. We're playing Imamushi. It's a game where you're a caterpillar thing. Oh. And he's kind of... I figured, like, the jump would be sort of a charge thing, but no, he just immediately launched himself. I hold... Up, oh, it doesn't seem to affect anything. Seems like he jumps purely based on the angle of the slope he's on. Welcome! He seems a little stuck. Oh, hang on, this isn't working. Hmm, what's that refresh this? I can't see my OBS window, so I was trying to use the uh, stream preview thing on... There we go, it's working now. Okay, hey, Ruben. Long stream? Maybe. Maybe. Whoa, okay. Depends on how fast I get the hang of how this little caterpillar controls. There we go. Ooh, that almost flung me off. Looks like a long stream. Yeah, might be. Hey, Vokker. Sure, why not? I'm wondering why that's even there. I'm a little worried. I probably should have prepared some uh, extra music, because this is all the music in the game. <laughs> Ruben only has about an hour. Well, if I can beat this in an hour, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, be prepared for a lot of oh no in this... Yes, yes, okay, okay, we got it. We're over to the banana. This is our first banana. Also, Frogo. Coming Sonic in here. Um. There we go, so hold up off that slope and I can jump on it. I saw the Frogo. Frogo. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, okay. We just land on the apples. It's not that bad. It's kind of bad. It's kind of bad. My stream preview thing on Twitch is like three seconds behind, but I can't... This game is very minimalist, as you can see, and it doesn't have any options for changing the screen size. It also doesn't let you change the controls at all. So this is like arrow keys and space bar. And thankfully that's it. Why? Why? Nope! Okay. 
We're fine. Bombs. So, I, yeah, I adjusted the, um... The window that the stream avatars live in. So, if we get more people in here, I'll try doing a boss fight. I won't be able to tell if the resolution's fixed, but you guys will know. So after yesterday's... I'm not sure it does. Yes, that button does affect it. Did I press? I'm pretty sure the up button affects my jump. I don't know, though. With Geography, we played three... Blookets. Chaos Cahoots. And Ruben completely stripped Steamrolled one. I remember looking into Book It, but I never actually did one for my class. I wonder if that little ghost worm is my previous attempts, or if it's someone else playing the game. Video game one, Monster Brawl or so. <laughs> we got double the third score. He had 1500, and the second had 8. Sorry, 880. Maybe I'm going too high up. <laughs> Had to laugh hard. Anyway, so this is sort of like my uh, my penance after yesterday, giving up. I kind of had to go outside and walk in the woods for a little bit and think about like what am I even doing this for. Am I even enjoying myself? And the main thing I could come up with is that, uh, if I don't like doing something, I stop doing it. So the fact that I'm still streaming kind of says that I like doing it. So we're gonna test that with this game. So that's why you were not streaming anymore? Well, I wasn't having fun with that rotation at all. I'm pretty sure I like streaming. Sometimes I doubt it. But again, like, if I don't like doing something, I stop doing it. That's a pretty standard pattern in my life. So I must like doing this. There's gotta be some trick to these bananas. The first time I got some, I got up the first two pretty quick. I don't know.
How was my walk? It was warmer than I thought it was going to be. The weather really can't make up its mind here. And there was no one there. There was no one in the park, so that makes me happy. Alright, so for that wall, what I should do is I should hold towards the wall and up. And same here. Towards the banana and up. We've made it, we've made progress. I do not trust this at all. Nope, there we go. Ruben likes getting no one in the park too. Need to take frequent little breaks to make it so that I don't cramp up my hands. I was kind of hoping this would have controller support. But it does not. Ruben is always outside at school, but now the weather's getting better and people are going outside and they can be loud. Ugh. Like, I'm perfectly proficient at pretending to be normal and, you know, saying hi and waving. But I don't want to say hi and wave. I want to just be in the woods and talk to myself out loud. That's painful. I feel like we're making progress here. And then I see that there's now two ghosts, which means I'm falling behind something. Whoa. Uh -oh. Now here we got these little bushes that sort of mark where I should jump. Back down we go. It just groups of six to twelve people going outside and just continuing their AULA stuff, which is loud, shouting and playing Brawl Stars. How do you play Brawl Stars outside? He doesn't know.
I tried to save it. So if the grass is dry and just go and sit by the tree, or I'll just go and sit by the tree. What if I do like this? Nope. No sense getting too fancy about it. What if I can skip to this third red fruit, though? Wouldn't that be great? It's not happening, though. When Ruben's biking, he likes to talk to himself, but that's a combo of ADHD and going insane. Yeah, I can't blame ADHD. I just got the, uh, slowly losing my mind. Oh no, he's stuck. There we go. ADHD plus going insane equals speed. Sometimes you just gotta press buttons. Wait a second, that almost worked. Thirteen and a half kilometers in forty three minutes. So that's I hate having to do these con con conversions in my brain. Um six miles. So that'd be almost nine miles? not know how to get on that banana. I almost feel like I gotta get it in like one move, like one motion. Sad face.
Come on. Come on, Emomushi. You can do this. This is what you were made to do. Actually, what you were made to do was eat a bunch of food and then turn into soup and become a butterfly or a moth or something, but... Gotta, gotta make do with what life you've been given. This is new. Uh, this is a game that came out, I think, in November? October, November, something like that? Called Emo Mushi. It's real cheap. It's only $2 on Steam. It's one of those, uh, you know, frustrate thons Where you have bad controls. It's a little simpler than something like getting over it, like to get your head around, but the jumps are weird. They seem to be based on the slope and whether I'm pressing the up button or not, and that's about it. So I think the mastery of this game is about learning where you press up, where you don't press up. It's a little jank. Reshi's trying to finish chili. Nice. It's definitely chili weather where I am today. You're a texture eater, so that means we gotta go there. We gotta breach the topic. Do you put beans in your chili? Because I find chili without beans doesn't really have that great a texture. Unless we're talking about, like, Texas style, it's just big chunks of meat chili. That can be good. Steam Engine Simulator ain't jank. Yeah, but Steam Engine Simulator, as far as I know, isn't a game about frustration and patience and stuff, and I need to practice being more patient so I don't get mad at my teammates in Salmon Run and so I can stream more. Alright, this jump. We're just gonna go for it. We're just gonna go... Bam! That didn't work. That didn't work! That didn't work. His... He's got rice and chili and cheese and sour cream. Now I need more details. Because I don't know much about putting rice in chili. Is this just like... Rice and... Chiles? Like... Peppers? Or are we just, like, not mentioning the meat? Ruben, I trust you that the anger was fair. Ain't being mad ain't bad. Maybe and being mad ain't bad. Yeah, but I'm supposed to be, like, old and wise at this point. I'm supposed to show y'all kids how to behave better. Dang. Cheese belongs on bread with butter. I mean, cheese is good in chili. Do they not have, like, basically spiced meat with a lot of tomatoes and onions and stuff in the Netherlands? So it's standard chili with meats and beans and stuff on a bed of rice, then top of shredded cheese and sour cream. So it's a little bit like, um... Like a better version of that Cincinnati chili, where they put the chili on top of spaghetti, but instead of spaghetti, rice. I'm still not sure I'm 100% on board, but I definitely try it. It's kind of like Tex-Mex curry rice. What I'm picturing here. 
Now I want to make that. Okay, we're gonna keep going with this. Yeah, there we go. We just have to start from a bit farther back. They roll. They rotate. They rotate. The purple ones rotate. You're supposed to show me that my mental health is also health. Well, with onions here? I mean, usually chili has onions in it. Yeah, we just rushed that part. We're on new territory now. Now we gotta change your momentum in midair. That's what that jump was. So I was supposed to sort of do the press towards the wall and up jump, and then in midair change to a wave from the wall. Ribbon's never had chili. All food is too spicy for me. I mean, you can make chili with not a lot of, um, heat to it. So it's once we get to the strawberry that we really risk falling down a lot. Should raise this mic stand up a little bit. Or should I? Nah, that's a good height. That's a good height. You can hear me. Again, I can't see my um my OBS, so I don't know how my sound is, like at all. Yeah, the rice would tone down the spiciness, sour cream would tone down the spiciness, adding cheese tones down the spiciness. Hey, Electron. Welcome to uh, Imamushi, where we are a caterpillar and we are trying to go up. Ooh, this is scary. See, because we didn't go up there, we went down. We went down a lot. There you go, there's the uh, essence of this game. It's just like, you know, getting over it, or a difficult game about climbing, or only up, you know, any of those games. The gimmick is that your caterpillar's jump is just... Not the easiest thing to control. Once you're in air, he's going. And his, it seems like the way he jumps is based on mostly the slope of where he jumps from. Reminds you of Pogo Stuck. I don't know Pogo Stuck. And I feel like I'm something of a connoisseur of these games, or at least watching other people play them. Stop it. No, no! And we're back to the beginning of the game. Welcome. Poga stuck's really difficult. Well, that's kind of the point of all these games, isn't it? I do not remember how this jump worked. Like that. Okay, I think I found a fast way across here. If 
I jump from this part of the slope, maybe a little farther back, I can keep my momentum going. Maybe. Then we go bong boing, and we're across. Think getting over it, but with a pogo stick. Getting over it's got a pogo technique, where you put your hammer underneath you. Okay, so from the edge of the slope, we hold up and jump, and we get on top. That attempt didn't go well. Does this mean that I beat Dave the Diver? I did not. I just... I was a bad streamer yesterday, and I canceled the stream... Because I wasn't having fun. And I need to learn more about patience. And this is a game about patience. Also, this is a game where if I screw up, it's entirely my fault. Unlike with Salmon Run. Where certain streamers, uh... We're gonna disregard their opinions. And say that, yeah, in Salmon Run, a lot of the times, you lose. Because your teammates are really bad. Like, really bad. Like, I'm pretty me personally I'm pretty clearly in the like top 90% of people who play that game and I'm terrible at it and most people are a lot worse than I am so we're gonna play this game where I'm still bad but <laughs> everything bad that happens is my fault This reminds Ruben of, of Yuki Usa. I do not know Yuki Usa. So there's a lot more of these frustrating climb the thing games than I'm familiar with. Like last summer, there was a whole bunch of ripoffs of getting over it, including one getting over it that's on the Nintendo eShop called getting over it, but it's not getting over it. Yuki Usa is free on stream, that's how Steam, that's how Ruben found it. Reshi's playing a game called Steam World Dig 2 without playing the first one. Then they started revealing massive lore drops about the end of the last game that revealed, oh wait, I don't know what's going on, maybe I should have downloaded to play the first game first. Nah. Have I played golfing over it? No. Because I much prefer watching other people play these games, and not playing them myself. But today I gotta do it. Today I gotta play one of these frustrate-a-thons as punishment. Also, I like how in this game, once you figure out how a jump works, it feels you feel kind of clever. No! You feel kind of clever sometimes. But I'm getting better at that jump. Ruben also likes watching more because it's free. <laughs> well, again, this game's only $2, so... It's about as close to free as you can get while paying money for it. Like, this is... The kind of money where when I go to the grocery store and I just, like... I keep the cash bills in my wallet, but whatever change I get, like the coins that are less than a dollar, I just dump them in a bucket. This is dump them in a bucket money, this game.
Nope. Yeah. So, across, then up, then across, then... Oh, we almost got that in one motion. Like, I don't press up jumping from the grass. I press jump jumping off the first apple. So, no up, up. And then up and hold. Nice. Electron's making a rage level and level head. I am afraid that I wouldn't even be able to control level head at this point. Like, I'm not going to be good at it. I should try out Jelly Car. You make all the sound effects for everything in the game. It's hilarious. That does sound like something would be funny for me to do. <laughs> Ribbon doesn't have a way to... A way himself to pay on stream. Okay, so we're gonna go from the slope, holding forward. Right, so we don't hold up on those jumps. Oh, no, 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 no! Nope, 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 nope! <sighs> so Electron's rage level doesn't require difficult techniques, except maybe coyote jumping, but that's tactical for all play platformers. Uh, except for this one. This one doesn't have coyote jumping. So we're gonna go up and... Hmm. I'm still trying to determine if you have any control over the bug when he's in midair. I'm also not sure if these bugs are me, or if they're some me, and some of them are like other players. Why don't I just stream Celeste 64? Uh, because I didn't really like that game. I found the camera controls to be like the worst combination of modern camera controls and uh, N64 era camera controls. I still had fun for like about an hour and a half with it, so for the price of free, it's a very good game. So, forward, up, up, hold up, hold jump. What if I don't hold up on this jump? That was fine. Ruby 100 presented it, and it wasn't worth it. Don't you do it, worm. He's not a worm, he's a caterpillar.
I think this one's going hollow. I think he's lost it. I'm slowly sliding towards him. I'm not pressing any buttons. It's an inchworm? No, by the way it's moving. It's... I mean, this isn't quite how an inchworm moves either, but it's supposed to be a caterpillar. Imamushi is like... One of the most generic words for caterpillar that doesn't have, like, fur on it. Can I control? Oh, okay. This isn't, that's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. Very size platform. Oh, yeah. Tiny, tiny, very fairly sized platform, yes. So, did I overshoot or undershoot that time? I need to pay more attention. Yep, get ready to listen to this music for... Well, probably several hours after the stream ends. And it's stuck in your head forever. Alright, we're gonna try jumping... I think I overshot. Pretty sure I overshot. So we're gonna jump from, like, the curve right here. I'm gonna see what happens. No! It sounds like a Route 1 Pokemon song. Pokemon music was way better composed than this. If I had Darude on any of these computers, that would be a great choice. Like any other music, but Sandstorm, obviously, especially since that's what everyone knows. After the stream ends, because. Or not after the stream ends, because I'm gonna put this on YouTube and Ruben's gonna watch the VOD. Why would you do that to yourself? I mean, I've got a decent thumbnail already ready for it if I wanted to put it on YouTube. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you watch the VOD on this? I don't know, maybe you think you have better things to do with your life. I would think you have better things to do with your life. If you want to watch Pogo Stuck, Markiplier has a really good playthrough of level 1 and 2. He didn't beat level 1, he had to turn on cheat to beat level 2. Oh, have you seen that, uh... That penguin game? That looks fun, too. As far as frustrating platformers. <laughs> Intentionally frustrating platformers like this go. <clears throat> Getting over it, basically. Getting over it? No, we should... Hang on. Yeah, getting over it was the... The... The first one. The one in the bucket, right? Where you're in the, the cauldron. These two worms right here fused to make a weird little smiley face. Like a Muppet. Okay, I gotta hold up on this jump. Just keep doing tricks, little guy. So we jump from the very edge here. We hold up again. 
Bread and Fred. Yeah, I think that's it. One of a handful of I gotta tap up there. One of the handful of streams of uh, Fuwawa and Mokoko that I've watched was Bread and Fred. Because, you know, who doesn't want to watch siblings get angry at each other in a penguin game? Oh yeah, there's also that game I Am Bread. I don't want to play that one. That's kind of a game that's... It's whole joke is its title. It's a game... People speedrun it. Okay, so we're gonna do a long jump. S why? <laughs> why didn't he go? Whatever. You need players to play bread and... Yeah, I need two players to play bread and bread. Bread and bread. Whichever it is. So I have to get Phil to play with me. I am bread. The OG rage game was oh was was I am bread before? Uh, getting over it. I'm pretty sure I Am Bread does not predate, um, Quop. Quop was a stream game before streams were even a thing. Bread was definitely before getting over it. Well, I'm pretty sure Quop was a thing when I was in high school, so... Those rotating purple fruits are not nearly as scary as they looked at first. Okay, so this one's an up jump. As is this. I think. Like, I can't tell if up actually affects my... It feels like it affects my... jump, but maybe it doesn't. Maybe the whole pressing up... Oh, Quap was 2008, so a little bit after I was in high school. Quap was made by Bennett Foddy. He's been torturing us for so many years now. So why did that work? Why did I make it jumping from farther back? And that time I was farther along the strawberry, but I didn't overshoot. This looks a lot like the laser bees I used to draw in my notebooks as a kid. Where even am I now? Ah, bananas. We're back at the bananas. Mm -hmm. 
the B is giving you pogo stick flashbacks. Are there bees in the pogo stick game? Back down we go! In level 2 there's a B section, it's quite annoying. Pesky bees! Seriously, are all these worms my attempts, or are they other players? I shouldn't have said anything earlier about the purple fruits not being as scary as I thought they were when I first saw them. Hang on, so why does my emo Mushi have those three little hairs on top of his head? He's supposed to be a hairless caterpillar. That's like the only defining trait of emo Mushi is it's a caterpillar and doesn't have hair on it. Honestly, this guy could be a Mexican jumping bean, though. That would make more sense. Would I rather always get brain freeze every time I drink something, or get a toothache whenever you eat something? Brain freeze. Definitely brain freeze over toothache. Okay, last time we just jumped from right about here, and it just worked. No, 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 no. Don't you do it. We're on. Oh, this looks real safe. Saved by the bee! <laughs> Not saved by the bee. Toothaches are infinitely worse. Yeah, toothaches, like, something's actually damaged. Brain freeze is just, oh no, the top of my mouth is too cold. I can fix Brain Freeze. Can 
Come on. It's just so weird how... I mean, I'm sure they didn't program each particular spot as a certain type of jump, but it really does feel like this game is about memorizing where is the spot I jump from. And here it's... That hurt. That was bad. I have no idea how long this game is, by the way. When I watched Inugami Korone play it, this is about as far as I saw her get, was the bees. Are all the ghosts in the backgrounds other players or past me? I think they're past me. But sometimes they just sort of stop in places that I don't remember stopping. Get past the section after the bees for, uh, bits of something. Or, for bits or something. Well, I gotta get past the section with the bees so that I can be free from the game. We gotta beat this game. That's the goal today. I ate extra and everything, so I don't get hungry until, like, later. And I've got snacks I can grab. I can just jump on him. Man, that was a bad one. That was that was awful. Rich just realized he hadn't continued One Piece in like four weeks. Fireman Island, where he left off. I don't even know where Fireman Island is. Fishman. Okay, well, I know where that is. That's where I stopped reading. That's where I stopped reading... Uh, ten years ago? A little over 10 years ago? I'm pretty sure that the up button do doesn't do anything at this point. Pretty sure it's placebo. Nope, there we go. All the way down. Fishman Island's totally some random side story island they would add. Oh, Fireman Island is totally some random side story they'd add. Like that one unfortunate chapter, or series of chapters about uh, 
Luffy getting into a boxing match with some other pirate crew. And Usopp's like, wear this afro, it'll make you stronger. Because blacks are champs. I assume that those episodes got cut in, like, any English releases. Silver, Fox, Foxy. Is that what it was called? Can't remember the name of the characters or the arc or anything. I just remember Usopp being like, Blacks are champs! This is gonna get me cancelled. Afro power. Like, you would think that'd be a positive thing, kind of. But it's really not. It's, it's black people as a costume. And that's a little messed up. It does affect my jump if I'm holding a direction. That wasn't placebo. That's pretty clear that that's actually happening. What if I let go of the direction, though? Yeah, so that was the perfect time to experiment with how the jumping mechanics actually work. Great, great idea, me. I like Pirates of Caribbean, so One Piece would be a nice pirate anime, right? Well, it's more of overcoming an overbearing government and victim of tyranny that comes along with it. Yeah, like the first two Pirates of the Caribbean movies. I really... The only one that for me really stands up to repeated viewings is the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie. I've watched the second and third a couple times too, but... Yeah, the first one's the good one. I didn't even like it the first time I watched it. But a couple years after it came out, I watched it again in a friend's place, and I'm like, wow, this is actually a pretty cool movie. That was a YouTube short. Yeah, I don't think that the Pirates of the Caribbean movies have that much to say about oppressive governments. I don't know that they have much to say about anything. Yeah. I don't know that they have much to say about anything, really, but... They are fun. Because Johnny Depp decided to be a drunk gay pirate. And who doesn't want that? Give me a second to stretch my hands. Can I use quad? Oh, I can. I can give my, uh, my right hand a little break here. You like how everything slows down when I fall? Yeah, the music going all like, no, is great. It's 
It's a very good touch. Now, if only we get someone sarcastically reading, like, lines about how I should be self-improving or something while we're at it. That had to be an interesting programming challenge to make the game know, okay, yeah, you are going to fall now. It's going to be a long fall. Have fun. Playing the same part of the game again. Oh, wait, now that we got people here, um... Let me throw y'all in a boss battle just to see if the thing I did with the, uh, window for the stream avatars actually works. So I can't really see my, um, my OBS. I've got a little preview window. That's about it. It's like a postage stamp size. But y'all let me know if this, um, actually works. Like, if you can read the text now. I would appreciate that. If you're more than X units from the ground on the Y-axis and you've been falling for 0.5 seconds, lower the gravity and slow the song 50%, something like that, maybe. I just really wish I knew if holding the up button was placebo or not. Because for some reason I can't make this jump anymore. That worked. I let go of forward when I landed the first time. Mm. The boss doesn't seem too big for the screen, so that's not bad. Burp, 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 burp. Song sounds overpowered. Are we talk about the song in this game or as like a bard ability in the streaming avatars? Just launched himself downwards. An ability in the stream avatars. Mm. 
It heals everyone for 16 to 25 hit points or something. Yeah, that sounds pretty helpful. Deals 15 to 25 to boss and lowers defense by 20%. So you can, you can actually read the descriptions now? Like, is the text big enough that you can actually read them now? Ooh, I threaded the needle all the way down. Ugh, vaguely, you can read it vaguely. It'll be kind of hard for you to make the text any bigger than it is. Okay, we're gonna hold jump through there. We're gonna jump at the corner. Like, right at this vertex. Vertex? Nah, I didn't quite do it. Maybe right before the vertex? Yeah, there we go. And his head's on the vertex. That's laughter, not song. Ah. That was a new one. New kind of fall. Settle down, little guy. There we go. If I, if I mash on the jump button while he's falling, he um, makes little noises and spins. So like the best of these games, this really is a game about learning the subtleties of its janky controls. <laughs> Where I have a little bit of influence on how he flies by how much I hold the button, how much I hold the jump button, how long I hold the direction button. But only a little bit of influence. To be fair, Reshi watches on 360 or 480p, so it's hard to read anything. Is your internet even worse than mine? Used to be? <laughs> okay, so this was like if I jump from the very bottom
Nope, 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 nah, -uh, no. We did not like that. Y'all got it? <sighs> okay. Okay. My keyboard is getting sweaty. Like, my hands are sweaty, but my keyboard is getting sweat building up on it. I was supposed to be working for my mom's friend again today, but it's raining pretty hard here, and you can't do a lot of work outside in this kind of rain. Where are we gonna land? Whew, that wouldn't be bad. So I'll probably end up working with her on Friday. But what's kind of bothering me is... I got these bruises on my arms from, like, reaching through a fence to stabilize it with wire. And I, you know, hurt myself on Friday. And the bruises kind of showed up on Saturday. And now it's Wednesday, and they're still here. Like, they don't hurt, but they're there. You know they're a real gamer if the sides of their mouths have a little buildup of white from the salt in their palm sweat being left behind. Yeah, this mouse has got definitely some gunk on it from playing Dave the Diver already. The computer that we watched anime on, that mouse is so old, the uh, Logitech symbol is worn off on it. Honestly, it's kind of nice that, as you know, so many consumer products just get worse and worse and worse every year. At least cheapo $5 mice. They're still good. They still work. Things aren't built like Game Boys anymore. No, not at all. I was clipping my toenails yesterday with a cheap nail clipper from, like, the 1990s. And it's still good. And, like, nail clippers in the 90s were crap compared to the ones you can get in the 60s. 
And now if you buy a cheap nail clipper, they barely cut. It's so... frustrating. I just, like, it's hard to find decent... Anything made of metal, really. I was very sad the day that a plumber walked off with one of my, um... Locking wrenches. Because... Any of those made this century suck. Unless you're willing to pay, you know, like $300 for them. Or go to a, you know, auction, like a police auction. Electron's old mouse before it broke was so old, the slidey plates at the bottom of the mouse, they help it glide across the mouse pad were worn down to the point where they were flush with the rest of the bottom of the mouse. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely the case with the, uh, the anime PC. I don't know how old that mouse is, but it's... Probably more than 10. Probably more than 10 years old. So, what worked was jumping from here. I shouldn't have pressed jump. Maybe we'll land on the melon. Nope! Rushy hates it when nail clippers can't actually cut through the nail and just leave crease marks. Ugh, and like, ugh. That makes me cringe just thinking about it. And then when you apply enough pressure, they just twist sideways and rip off the part you're trying to cut and give you an ER visit. Ugh. Yeah, just the thought of the nail not quite cutting <laughs> makes me kind of queasy. Also, I'm totally an old man complaining about how things ain't built how they used to be. But it's true. It was true in the 90s, and it's true now. Electron just rips off his nails with other nails. Yeah, just pull, use a nail puller. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm gonna give myself nightmares. Have you ever watched that Punisher movie? I don't know if they've made multiple Punisher movies or not. But the Punisher movie I watched had this scene where, like, they tortured a guy by pulling out his, uh, piercings. And that's why I can never have piercings. Because I would be terrified of, like, getting them caught on something and just ripping out. <laughs> Redded the needle again. When I was a kid, I used to bite my nails a lot. I never got to, like, the point where, um, like a lot of people do, where they bite their nails way too often, and they get all, like, turned in these little tiny nubs. I don't know why I decided to stop doing it, and just, like, use nail clippers like a normal person. But at some point, I did just decide, yeah, I'm not going to bite my nails off anymore. Rushy bites the inside of his lips instead of his nails. Since this weekend, my lips have been slightly chapped. And it's not too bad. But it is sometimes satisfying when you have, like, pretty badly chapped lips and just, like, a chunk comes off. That was probably weird. That was probably a strange thing to say. I don't endorse very much self-cannibalism.
He barely jumped! What happened? You know what I'm talking about? Nice. I'm never sure if when my lips are chapped, if I'm like helping or not. Because generally, you know, if something's broken and crusty on your body, you're not supposed to pick on it. But with your lips, it's like, what other choice do you have? Reshi never uses chapstick. I use chapstick before I go to sleep in the winter. That's about it. It's also getting harder and harder to find the chapstick that doesn't have um, camphor in it. Like, lately, the last couple years, the only reliable source of, like, non-camphor chapstick I can find is the strawberry-flavored kind, which feels a little strange to put on. Every once in a while, though, I'll find, like, the uh, non- Scented, no camphor chapstick, and I'll stock up when I do. If I ever run out, though, I can go to the gas station and get the cherry kind. See, this, this is the proper streaming experience, where I've just so run out of things to talk about. I'm talking about, like, grooming habits. What is camphor? Camphor is a tree oil, I think. It smells kind of... smells kind of like alcohol. Like raw alcohol. It has that same sort of drying effect. Which is why I don't know why they put it in chapstick. When Reshi was a kid, he put on flavored chapstick and immediately licked it off and then decided it'd be a good idea to bite off half the stick. Mmm. And his mouth was lubricated for four months. I know it's a thing some places where people have to put basically chapstick on their dogs' noses. the climate is so, like, arid. But I can't recall exactly where that happens. Why would they put something that dries your lips and something that's supposed to do the opposite? That's dumb. Oh, wait, he knows why, so they buy more chapstick. Exactly. Welcome to, uh, capitalism. We sell you the cause and the cure. This is not always true. Take medicine that your doctor prescribes you and stuff, but... That's why I can't be too much of a cynic. Because there's too many people on the internet who are just like complete knee-jerk contrarians. Who don't understand that just because something's bad some of the time doesn't mean it's always bad all the time. And you don't look smart for pretending like... You know you know more about everything in the world than you really do. But yeah, almost certainly they put the camphor in the uh, chapstick because it has sort of a cooling effect. So it feels effective. But then you're like, wait, no, my lips are drying out more. I need to use more chapstick. The bird's outside right now, going... You know what, I'm not going to try to count out those uh, quarter notes. Well, actually, that's a, what? Maybe triplet, triplet, eight, eighth, triplet.
Electron was able to recreate the Grizzco charger in side order yesterday, but with what with ink efficiency. When I get back to that, I would like to try to make the uh, overpowered auto lock-on charger. That seems fun. But I still gotta beat, um... Still gotta beat 8's palette. And if I didn't still need to do a lot of personal growing, that would probably happen yesterday on stream. But instead I stopped. I stopped playing the game because I was frustrated. Too late to stream. Resh just wants to play it. Oh yeah, just use all purple chips. Exactly, the, the... The favored color on the... Charger is purple chips, right? The thing is, the Charger was like the first thing I cleared the tower with. So I didn't have all the resets and stuff, and the extra color affinities that you need to get monochrome runs. Honestly, this charger is just really easy once you get a couple of upgrades on it. Okay, fingers, don't get, don't get it twisted. You jump and release the arrow. We're holding jump and releasing the arrow key. There we, there we go. We bounce more or less straight up and not into the side of the banana. I heard this really stupid... Uh, Kasane Teto song the other day. If you don't know, Kasane Teto is a Vocaloid. It's not actually a Vocaloid. She's like a unofficial Vocaloid, but, but like one of the first unofficial Vocaloids. Anyway, it's a song about her being a great English teacher and how um, you should learn to speak English because lots of people speak English and it will make you cool, probably, if you can speak English. But it has this little, this little aside, this little section of the song that's just, Hey, did you know that you share 50% of your DNA with bananas? You're a banana. I'm a banana. We are all half banana. I've, I've ruined everything here. Saved it. Electron shredded Smallisk so fast with the rapid fire charger. Just like mash the button like he was playing brush. Well, yeah, my first clear on a uh, Smallisk was with the charger. So, you know, that phase they give you where you're like super overpowered. It was just like lock on, instant charge, full ink efficiency. And so I wasn't even aiming at him, it was just like shredding him. Also, on one of my runs where my special at the end was the hammer, wow, the hammer does a lot of damage to Smallisk. Back down to the apples. They're so excited to see us. Can some people be more banana than other people? Well... Given advances in CRISPR technology, yeah, probably. We're getting to where we can splice genes into living things, not just living cells, but full-on living organisms and have those genes propagate. So if you, you know, play your cards right and live another 50 years, maybe you can get, you know, some sort of household CRISPR kit and use it to turn yourself into 
two quarters or three quarters banana. Grow a thicker skin. That unfortunately could be easily peeled off. I don't think that'd be great, actually. Did I see the people making a meat grape? I've seen a thumbnail about it. And I remember a couple years ago, the restaurant Arby's made a meat carrot. I don't know why you would make any of those. Oh, um, actually, speaking of meat carrots, I've heard that if you slice carrots really thin and then, like, grill them, they can be sort of like a vegetarian substitute for bacon, and I really need to try that. Same thing with, like, you take a cabbage and you slice it into discs. And put like olive oil on it and then you grill it. I suppose it tastes really good. I just hate the idea of, you know, most of the cabbage would not turn into a disc very well. So you'd be wasting like at least a quarter of that cabbage. Also, I don't know how well the core of the cabbage would turn into uh, something edible, no matter how long you cooked it, without first like cutting it up somehow. need to hold a jump there. So we jump a little bit after the curve. We hold jumping forward and pray. Is that a D's nuts joke, Electron? <laughs> Like, I'm not good at, you know, like, mind goblins and stuff type of jokes, but I know a few of them already. It's funny because it's an actual product. And now I miss when websites were all, like, flash... Thread the needle. When websites were all, like, flash-based and you could make it so when you open up a website, some, like, song starts playing. Because back then, if those nuts had been a product, they could have made the website just scream at you, DEEZ NUTS! Dietz and Wilson made a thing called Dietz Nuts, which are like beef jerky pieces. For when a can of mixed nuts isn't manly enough for you, I guess. It's totally a stereotype because it's true that if you don't know what to get an older dude, just get him a big jar of, like, mixed nuts. Less peanuts the better, but peanuts are good too. Every once in a while, I just stop being able to make this jump. Like a good macadamia nut. Macadamia nuts are so good. Like, I gotta ruin everything for myself by understanding its ecological impact and, you know, knowing that cashews just... Cashews, almonds, 
They're more expensive than peanuts because they take a lot more resources to make than peanuts. Water and labor wise. So it doesn't totally ruin it for me, but it ruins it a little bit. I'm not the kind of person, though, that would go to a party and be like, no, I'm not going to eat those macadamia nut uh, cookies because I don't know if you got fair trade macadamia nuts. I can look for fair trade vegetable products or plant products on my own time. Reshi's never tried a cashew apple. Apparently they're really soft and bruise easily, which is why the cashew's on the bottom. Push in the fall. I'm pretty sure cashews are also related to um, poison ivy. I know mangoes are. So the cashew nut, I'm pretty sure is poisonous. Not the nut, the, uh, the apple part. Which is again part of why they're so labor intensive to harvest, because you gotta know what you're doing not to mess up your hands. There we go. You really want to try a mangosteen, too. You guys had me search what one of those looks like the other day, did, like a couple weeks ago. Was that the one that looked kind of like a cross between an apple and an orange? Like the inside was very much sectioned like an orange, but the flesh was very solid looking, not like a citrus. I gotta hold jump. Why do I keep not holding jump there? Jump from the crease, hold jump. You can do this. Also, the bonus... Bonus wet line of Pokemon are based off of Mangosteens. I don't know that I know that Pokemon. Bound Sweet. I'm gonna Google that real quick. Oh, those little guys. Yeah, they're cute. All right, jump from the crease, hold the jump button. Barely miss the rock. Could've been worse. People want the final Evo to step on them. Zarina? Yeah, I had a Zarina in my, um... Shield team, just because. I was like, this Pokemon looks like Miku. I'm gonna keep it on my team. Even if it's not good. Are they big enough to step on a person, though? Like, Pokemon scale is always a little bit vague, but... You know what? Never mind. That doesn't seem terribly important. Whether or not Zarina can step on me. Based off Pokemon Unite, Zarina is like three feet tall, so yeah, it'd be kind of hard for her to step on even someone like me. It's raining worms.
three star, three more stars. You said three inches at first. Yeah, I don't know how abbreviations work either. I just went with what made sense. Technically, anything can step on anyone. They may not be big enough to do it like how people want, but everything can. Except for Emomushi, because he doesn't have feet. Well, I mean, he technically has feet. But they're basically part of his gut. <laughs> She'll break your bones! Oh, there's an Alpha Zarina from Legends Arceus that she can definitely step on people. Can a slug step on someone? Because slugs have feet. They have a foot, anyway. What's the definition of step or stomp? Yep, we're getting to that territory now. I feel like to stomp, you need to be able to put significant downward force. Because if it's if you're putting force forward with your foot, then it's a kick. It's got to be down to be a stomp. of movement by putting one's leg in front of the other and walking or running. Step. And then there's in Pokemon where it counts riding your bike as steps. So... We're talking about Pokemon stomping on things, it just makes things more complicated. <laughs> I thought I'd saved it! I thought we'd get to go play with the bees some more. Stomp, tread heavily and noisily, typically in order to show anger. Rushi's never heard a noisy slug before. There's gotta be some slug that can make noises. Like a hissing slug or something? I feel like that's a thing. The noise I made earlier. I don't know which noise you're talking about. Come on, you can do this! Reshi knows about hissing cockroaches, and they make noise, but not slugs or caterpillars. Ah, uh, what was it? A couple weeks back, I heard about the loudest invertebrate. 
slash loudest thing for its size. And if I remember right, it was some sort of insect that like slams one of its legs against itself. But I don't remember now. My brain is mush. Are these bushes, like, hints on where to jump? I don't think they are. Oh, hi, uh, Super Sumo Gaming. Thanks for the follow. I don't know what we're doing, though. Oh, what do we got? So, neither slugs nor snails have vocal cords. Well, you don't need vocal cords to make noises, like rattlesnakes. They make noise by shaking their tail. No, neither slugs nor snails have vocal cords, but some have more evolved species of ability to communicate telepathically. Those have been known to terrorize people who mention the word salt when in their presence. Well, luckily, Imamushi has an exoskeleton that will not make him dry out in the presence of salt. Anyway, hi, Super Sumo. I feel like I've seen that name before, even though it says this is the first time chatting here. Maybe Reshi once told me to raid you or something? Am I going crazy, or are the bushes, like, wiggling more than they used to? You think I raided him at some point. There we go. The study was focused on the Nessus Sphinx Hawk Moth caterpillar, which lets out a high-pitched cry that sounds like static when approached by a predator. So there is a caterpillar that goes screeching, but it's like not a screech, more like a... I saw this little video yesterday, like 30 seconds, of uh, some paleontologist cartoon they made of just like a Carboniferous era forest. And their description was it was uh, all the chirping noises were made by me. Oh, have you guys seen that Kermit the Frog fossil? Saved. It's this, uh, early amphibian, and just because of the way it was fossilized, it ended up having a very flat, preserved head. And so, like, this looks like Kermit. We're gonna call this proto-amphibian Kermit. Slenderman lore. Yeah, what if Slenderman is just like a bunch of um a bunch of caterpillars in a trench coat? At this point, I'm willing to believe anything. My brain is now emo mushy. Honestly, Electron, the uh Kermit proto amphibian fossil looked a bit like that emote. What do we call the new moth? Uh, Nessus Sphinx Hawk Moth. It could be they just mixed a bunch of old, like, existing common names. 
Because it's not that rare for, you know, you find a new species to science, but, you know, the people who live there have known about it forever. Just last week, a um, new species of crab was described that was unknown to science, but people have been catching them and putting them in aquariums for years. It's a very neat looking little crab. It's like got a... The top of its carapace, sort of a red line, and then a black line, and then a blue line. So I can definitely see why people want to put it in their aquarium. It's very, it's very striking looking crab. It's like the scientists looked around the room for ideas and chose the name of several things looked at. I mean, it's better than naming what you've discovered after yourself because what if you turn out to be a jerk then everyone's got to call that forever or even worse there's this um if i remember right there's this protein that's involved in eye development and for some reason the people who describe the gene that makes this protein called the gene the sonic the hedgehog gene and then the antagonist for that gene the uh, robotnik gene Anyway, it turns out it's involved with a lot of cancers. And so people have to talk about, like, you know, defective Sonic the Hedgehog genes. Oh man, that was so close. So it's important to, uh, be a little bit careful when you name things for science. But you're probably pretty safe just looking around the room and being like, uh... Watch Victory Gundam Caterpillar. There's nothing terribly prob problematic in uh, Victory Gundam except for that part where they use women in bikinis to attack the pilot because he's a teenage boy and they think that'll distract him enough. But it doesn't, and so he ends up blowing up a bunch of half-naked women with bazookas. Um, but that's about the worst thing in the whole show. It's kind of iconic. Red line? Like, One Piece reference? Don't even. Or Fortnite reference. Ah, uh, yes, the couched lampshade moth. Uh, what's it called? Lantern moths. Those are a thing. They're an invasive species. They're really pretty, though. But you're pretty much encouraged around here to, uh, kill them on sight, and then tell the whatever local university is around that has an entomology department. Spotted lantern flies, yeah. Years ago, I was getting the mail, and I saw one at the post office, and I was like, "Ah, ah! now I gotta deal with this. I honestly don't remember if I squished it or not. Are the bushes in the background swaying more than they used to? Or are they just trying to make me think I'm going crazy? Sumo's gonna lurk for a while, but, uh... Yeah, thanks. So uh, I will try to have a good stream, but we've been going for... Two hours, and I haven't gotten past these bees. I also don't think I'm really much closer to understanding how jumping works in this game than I was when I started, other than I've given up on the possibility that the up arrow key affects anything. Oh, what's by I am 8-bit? You can kill like 80 of them by wrapping duct tape around a tree trunk with a sticky and facing out, and they only climb up trees and they don't fly up. Yeah, but around here I'd probably also catch a bunch of like Skinks. 
I was very much annoyed one day when I was going out to do inspections on this, um, storm pond that had been recently installed, and the environment department of the state at that time was really encouraging people to use this material called, uh, coconut fiber to help hold dirt in place while they wait for grass to grow. And coconut fiber sounds like a great, you know, environmentally friendly material to use in place of straw. Because, like, it sticks together. It sticks together better than straw. But part of the reason it sticks together better than straw is because underneath the coconut fibers is this plastic netting. And so I was inspecting a stormwater pond that didn't have any stormwater in it at the moment. And I found a bird that had gotten wrapped up in the plastic netting. And thankfully people didn't pay much attention to me at the time, so I was able to spend like 15 minutes getting this bird to calm down enough so that I could touch it, and then slowly releasing its head from the plastic mesh that it was wired up in. And that bird was lucky, because I'd been there other times where there had been snakes that had got ca caught up in the plastic mesh and died. Yeah. Stanley Parable Vinyl was interested until he saw the label was through I'm 8-Bit, and they have notoriously bad vinyl quality and customer service. Oh well. And it's $50. It's like having a paper-coated plastic straw. I think you mean like the plastic-coated bamboo straws? Or the plastic-coated paper straws? Either way. Yeah, the bamboo netting... looks fine on paper, but... when you actually see how the product is made, it's not great for the environment. Okay, I'm gonna go take a break real quick to grab some water and go pee and make sure my house doesn't burn down. So I'll be back in a minute. Or two. And then we're gonna try to get back to them bees. Uh, headphone warning.
All right, I'm back. What is... What song is this, by the way? I forgot what it's called. Um, I just use it because I have the rights to it. I have a license to use it. So I did. And I liked it. So. If you don't have all the packaging that was sent with the record, no refund or replacement, even if it's damaged... If you don't have all the packaging, you get nothing, you lose. Good day, sir. Fantastic customer service there, yeah. Also, considering it's vinyl, and, like, a lot of BS fees that we pay when we buy music are derived from the inevitability that records would break in shipping. And they just never stopped charging those fees, even after we moved on to, you know, tapes and CDs and direct downloads. Reshi's almost max. Something 11 in Clash of Clans. Just got to upgrade his last cannon. And it's King and Queen more level and his Town Hall. How many years will that take? Let's see, can I look up what the name of that song is in the crab record? Let me check something real quick. No, that's not where I kept that. Okay, yeah, it's somewhere on my computer. I could look it up, but I don't really want to. It would take about three days to get his last can and quit. King and Queen one level, and his Town Hall up one more level. That's not as bad as I thought. I'm, you know, that, rep that game has a bit of a reputation. Saved it! Totally not intentional, but saved it. Hmm. Supercell's been doing a great job of making progression faster with magic items given for free, events, and reducing upgrade times in 2016, level 14 to 15 cannon. Instead of taking 24 hours, would have taken about 6 days. Definitely making improvements as the uh, whales slowly run out of money. This music reminds you of Suica game. The music... The fruits, definitely. At least the music in this game isn't nearly as overpoweringly loud. Like, Suica game, you boot that game up and just like... Bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. This is fairly relaxed by comparison. Okay, back down to the apples. All Reshi can picture is Ludwig going borderline insane, singing the Suica song while he plays for and misses two flights. Ow. That's a lot of wasted money.
Like, Suica games are pretty good. It's a pretty good little game, but... At least in streaming, it was definitely a flavor of the month kind of thing. Ooh, that was a weird bounce. They chose it's the perfect face for this little worm. Guys, I gotta catch my flight. I'll pack up later. I gotta beat my friend's high score. I'll buy another one. Guys, I need to catch my flight. Okay, fine. One more chat. One more. Okay, screw it. This is the last one. I can. Oh, this is the last one I can miss. Yeah. That's definitely an enviable problem to have. That you can't stop playing Suica game and you can afford to miss two flights. Man, it's been almost an hour since we saw the bees. jump from back like here like what's his tail cross that bush let me get her head like halfway in this bush this one doesn't matter that's an easy jump i don't know what to do with this like the one time we made it we jumped from like here i think and thread the needle Right back down. I just forgot I was going to put another, um... Yeah, it can wait. It can wait until the two and a half hour mark. But I could put up another post on Blue Sky saying, Hey, I'm still doing this. You should, uh... Come laugh at my suffering. But really, this isn't suffering, like... This is a pretty chill little game. It's definitely one of those getting over it clones where most of the game is not that hard once you figure out what you're doing. Like, it's hard figuring out the first time what to do, and then, like, once you practice it a couple times, it's pretty easy. Pretty consistent. I say as I missed that jump two times. Rushy's actually insane with... Gyarados in Pokemon Unite right now. He's played 28 games and has an 82% win rate with him. Well, with that many games, you're definitely not playing bots, so... Congratulations on ruining a bunch of children's days. Why did he just barely jump there? Like, that keeps happening. If I jump before the crease, he just barely jumps. Those games were on school nights at 2 a.m.? Two AM in your time zone.
It's region-based matchmaking. Oh, if kids are playing, then I don't know what to tell them. You should tell them to go to bed. If it's region-based matchmaking and they're playing with you at 2 a.m. Though, do you think that win rate might also be a product of, like, other people being really tired? What if I just make the jump? What if I just say no to the little rock in the middle? The rock in the middle is a red herring. We're gonna try that. Anyway, yeah, have you thought about that maybe you're playing against people who are really sleep deprived? And there's thunder. Thankfully, I haven't heard any thunder here. And the sky is starting to light up a little bit, so I don't think I'm going to lose power. I actually didn't consider losing power, but... With how many times I've lost power in the last few months just because of rain? I would assume most infrastructure around me is a little bit reinforced at the moment. So until that extra duct tape breaks, we're probably good. He just says, no. No, we're not going to make that jump. We're not even going to... You gotta hit the rock. You gotta hit the rock. Or else you go back down to the apples. It's about to start pouring. Yeah, I think the clouds around me have mostly dumped their water now. Rushy's in Pennsylvania. So are you affected at all by that uh, key bridge breaking down or getting crashed into and collapsing? I haven't heard about it, so probably not. That's interesting. Because, like, even my friend from high school, who I see at the grocery store now, because I guess they change his shift to be when I usually go buy, go buy groceries. Anyway, even he knew about it. And I was like, have you heard about it? And I'm like, yeah, that's absolutely crazy. And then we compared it to some drawbridges around here and how much everyone would have to go out of the way if they were, you know, crashed into by a tanker ship. Anyway, Boston's going to have a uh, lot of traffic problems for the foreseeable future. since one of their main bridges got crashed into by a tanker ship and collapsed. And... Not worst case scenario occurred because the only people on the bridge were construction workers doing repairs, but... Still pretty terrible, that... Pretty nightmare scenario, you know, you're doing your job on a bridge and then uh, a couple seconds later you're in freefall.
Yeah, we made it. <laughs> oh, wow. And that's what I get for rushing. So what we're going to try from now on is we're going to try to land and then tap jump when we hit the little rock. Like the first times, the first two times we got across, we just held jump, but that hasn't been working. Okay, so we put the head in the crease of the strawberry and then tap jump again when we touch the rock. Mmm, mm-mm, nope, that was bad. Refresh this real quick. Make sure that I haven't disconnected from chat. Oh no, I just realized I've forgotten the name of this guy who used to show up on my Mario streams basically every time to give me the same uh, getting over it level. It was an ice level that involved a lot of very precise duck jumps. And I never beat it. And I haven't seen him since I stopped playing Mario. Just let that play out. Fake fan shaking my head. I mean, Mario was a very effective game for getting followers because people wanted me to play their level. And some of the levels were good, and some of the levels were not good. I just really didn't like the puzzle levels that involved figuring out some, like, obscure Mario glitch. Reshi got his affiliate through Mario Maker 2 viewer levels. Yeah, it's kind of, it kind of just does itself. It kind of just works on its own. People want to watch people play their levels. And they want to type capital lull 
when you fall into their awful little trolls. Has anyone else here been keeping track of the uh, effort to beat all of the Mario Maker 1 levels? Because as of like the beginning of last week, they had it down to a single Mario Maker 1 level that's not beaten. And so people were, you know, grinding it out. It was very, very crazy. Yeah, there's none left. They, they beat them all. Though it turns out that the one they were working on last week, uh, trimming the herbs... Turns out... It was this giant elaborate troll. Where... The person who made the level... In uploading his second to last level he put in Mario Maker 1... Did a bunch of damage to his hands. And so he wanted to make one last troll, and the way he did this last troll was by someone reaching out to him, who is going to remain anonymous probably, and telling him, we've got a, uh, a task production tool for Wii U. But they kind of abandoned the project, and so the guy who made the final level of Mario Maker 1 that wasn't cleared made this basically tasks only level and the intent was like seven years ago back when mario maker one was still a thing he was going to wait for people to pay attention to it grind it out a little bit and then like he was going to tell people yeah we have task tools for mario maker one and then people didn't pay attention to the level and so he never released the task tools he never got to finish the joke and so he sat on Mario Maker 1 tasking tools for seven years until he got the opportunity to finally finish the joke last week by coming clean and being like, yeah, this, I tasked this. And it's just so appropriate that, I mean, it's not really the last level anymore, trimming the herbs, but it's so appropriate that what people thought was the last level for like a week or two turned out to just be a big elaborate troll. How Mario Maker? So before that whole bridge collapsing situation, To me, the big infrastructure project in the United States that I was paying attention to was the um, the repairs that are being done to the seawall. It's not called a seawall because it doesn't touch the sea, but the... What are you going to call a seawall? The seawall along the Potomac River in Washington, D.C. Like, they're doing repairs to it and also upgrading it so that it can be made taller in the future when sea level rise necessitates that. And part of what they have to do to get that to work is they have to cut down like 150 of those cherry trees that were gifted to the United States after World War II. No, 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 no! Oh. <laughs> oh, God. We are banana. Anyway, people were upset that the uh, tree is going to get cut down for this project that is basically necessary to make it so that Washington, D.C. doesn't start falling into the Potomac River. But I was glad to see that when I finally found some, like, detailed coverage of it, that the plan is, after 
you know, the repairs are done and the upgrades are done to the seawall, that there's gonna be like 250 more cherry trees planted to replace the ones they took out. Along with a bunch of other trees that are gonna be taken out, but no one cares about the other trees. They don't have quite the historical significance of, yeah, we nuked your country, and then they apologized to us by sending cherry trees. This right here, this section right here, is like your intestines after eating some dodgy sushi. Just full of worms. Look at them go. There we go. I wonder if I'll ever get that consistent. Like, I'm trying to jump from the same spot where his neck is in the uh, crease of the strawberry. Have I played Octodad? I did. Have you never made me make references to, uh, you know, Octopus? This game is actually a political commentary about the tyrannical nature of the government always trying to keep you at your lowest, hence all the pitfalls and holes trying to drag you down. You have to climb your way back out up the capitalistic ladder to seek your own freedom. Maybe. Come on, come on, come on. Okay. Saved. Save that. Not sure which getting over it game that is. It's definitely not only up though, because only up was about child abuse. Yeah, yeah, that was that was intentional. That was a great save. I'm so good at this game. to the banana. So we're well past the uh, refund time for this game at this point. I'm not a caterpillar. You're a small, long, only yellow, three antenna, no legs, no wings, no stinger bee. That would explain why the bees are not hostile towards me. Normally laser bees would shoot on sight. I don't know, I keep seeing the bananas and thinking banana slug.
If I'm going to lean back this much, I should probably move my microphone a little closer to me. It's still kind of far. And again, I can't see my OBS, so I don't know if I'm actually making enough noise for y'all to hear. Doesn't matter at this point. We're just here for this hot gameplay. Are the purple ones supposed to be grapes or obese eggplants? I think it's like Doug, where most people are just like, most fruits are just nondescript, it's a fruit, and whatever color it is, it's whatever color it is. The strawberry being the exception, just like Skeeter being the uh, one clearly coated black kid, even though he was blue. Well, you try something new, and uh, sometimes it doesn't work. There we go. Like a two-second time save there. I may have broken it. Okay, we're back. We're back. We're good. We're fine. Over the ninja warrior eggplant things. Restrain myself. <laughs> Am I acting inappropriately somehow? Should have stayed there a bit longer. Could have made myself into a particle accelerator and got boosted to the heavens. Yeah, we're gonna just accelerate my uh, my worm until he reaches some parallel universes, and then that should save us some A presses. Except we're only pressing A to go to the left, so I don't know how that's gonna work out, honestly. I could save A presses by just using the arrow keys. Or does every arrow key press count as an A press? I think I'm getting pretty good, but I can handle criticism. Back down to the apples. At this point, Rashi will play $70 for Silk Song. He doesn't care, he just wants to play it. At this point, Silk Song is going to be such a massive game that one, no one will have a hard drive large enough to hold it, and two, no one will have anywhere near enough time to actually play it. It's going to be like you play a, a uh, Hollow Knight-esque game, right? You get to what you think in the end, is the end, and then it's like, 
in Okami, where you beat Yamato Orochi, and then it's like, okay, and here's the rest of the game. It's like 400 times longer than that bit. Wouldn't be surprised if they start porting the game to another engine because of some unity, something unity pulled. Well, they'll probably have to port it to another engine at some point because computers, you know, will no longer support such an ancient uh, run environment as Unity. It'll be like they were programming it in Tandy code or something. Doesn't have native VR support? I'm not gonna buy it. You know, in 2067 when it finally comes out. Doesn't directly link to my brain? What kind of primitive garbage is this? And then the old folks be like, no, you don't get it. We used to play games with controllers, man. It's crazy. Yeah, there's my Silk Song VR mode. You could probably make, like, a remake of Hollow Knight in uh, VR chat at this point. Like, just totally remake the game in VR chat. And you'll be done before Silk Song comes out. Back down to the bottom. Controller. I have two of those. Everyone does. They're on the ends of your arms. <laughs> Tragic. How many times that I've fallen from there? I just realized there's friction and I'm slowly sliding backwards if I don't move forward. We are Red Queen Mushi now. <laughs> At least two times. I uh, didn't quite thread the needle that time. You jump, let go forward, and then press forward again. Come on, done this a million times now. Not literally a million yet. That's kind of like when a few weeks ago someone told me I hadn't actually ruined my life because I hadn't been to jail, and I'm like, you're right, I haven't been to jail yet. And they're like, why'd you say yet? Thinks he's saving time, doesn't. 
How about these bananas? Just like they, they age in real time. Eventually they'll become just completely brown while I'm playing this game. Almost fell. Nah, don't talk like that. You didn't almost fall. You definitely didn't fall. Succeeded at not falling. Please don't do this to me, game! You love it for every one minute played, 1% of the saturation hue gets taken away, so it's just a monotone and miserable. I'm still not sure if the bushes were actually shaking at the beginning of the game, and they just started shaking more and more just to make me question my sanity. head first there. So, I guess part of controlling the jumps here is making sure I rotate the right amount so that I can get a proper jump after I land. Because he does kind of uncurl wherever he is in his rotation. And it does affect how he lands. So much to learn. Oh, okay. We're still here. We're still doing this. It's a little distracting when I totally overlap with one of my- or not quite overlap with one of my ghosts. So it looks like I've got this weird little aura. We're back. <laughs> Not quite a save there. It's like, what if while you were playing Sonic the Hedgehog, you had to consider where he was in his spin in order to land properly and not break his legs? That's what this game does.
I'm a brilliant tactician. I know exactly what I'm doing in this game. Saving so much time by just jumping to the bee. Next time I get to the bees part, I'm gonna go real quick and make another post on Blue Sky to tell people that I'm still doing this in the vain hope that someone will notice and watch me. At probably my worst, because I am not being a good streamer right now. I'm just like... not hosting, not really talking much, just playing the worm. He's not a worm. He's a caterpillar. Anyway... Didn't get to the bees that part, that time. At some point there's gonna be like a memory leak from all these ghosts. I'm gonna crash my computer with no survivors. Let's go ahead and tell people I'm still doing this. Just copy that, open up Blue Sky, find my post. Don't read the new Stan Kelly comic. another Twitch link to make things easy on people so they don't have to click around or anything. All right, that's enough. Uh, did it just zoom in, like, way in on my worm while I was not looking at it? Doing a little worm dance. Oh man. PB, we did it. Does the worm have a perm? Those things seem pretty stuck there, so yeah. You know why? Why life? Why you gotta be like this? Patiently wait for the laser bee to come back.
I made it past the section of the bees, and I got 50 bits from Reshi. Thanks, Reshi. Now I just need a time machine so I can go back to, uh... About 20 years ago and I could buy a soda for that. Orange! Well, it's a good thing I sort of mastered the rotational control. Because there's no way that would have happened if I hadn't done that. Ugh. Ugh. Ugh, I don't like this at all. And down we go. Back in Reshi's day, that was 25 pieces of candy. 50 if you got a sucker. We found the snake, guys. That was the snake. That was this game's equivalent of the snake. Suppose just hold jump there. Come on, I can do this. The apples are supposed to be easy now. Right at the three hour mark. <laughs> I mean, did we lose that much progress, really? It doesn't take that long to climb back up. Give me a second, I gotta get up here. I gotta bite my hands off, cause getting a little sweaty. Should take off the hoodie. That might help. Might help. So we just gotta get back to the bees. The bit so the three little blocks, those are still a problem. They're not super hard, it's just like the price of failing on the little the three little blocks is super high. But I think I got the part after the three little blocks pretty figured out. Definitely going to hear this song in my nightmares. Not quite. Not quite a save. The slow descent into, into insanity. 
with this song in the background. It's kind of a good thing it's not really that catchy. It's kind of tuneless. Makes it a little bit less of an earworm. <laughs> Wall jump. This watermelon has bushes growing out of its head. Do you think that hurts? It has hair. Do not buy watermelons with hair. <laughs> it's mold. It's big, fluffy, green mold. I think now we're just being insulting. Mold, hair, same thing. I mean, the actual body of a mushroom looks kind of like hairs. You know, that could... Emo Mushi also kind of looks like a slime mold. Like, sometimes slime molds will make this little slug form. He looks more like a slime mold than he looks like an Emo Mushi. But it'd be kind of hard to sell a... 10k keen game. It's not quite as cute sounding as Emo Mushi. Speaking of weird, cute Japanese junk, I'll never be able to get it, but there's this um new gachapon thing called Kidobutsu. And they're like little animals with weapons attached to their bodies. Like a mouse that has a pile driver thing, like punching mechanism. No, 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 it was the cat with the pile driver, the mouse had a chainsaw. Anyway, it's just junk. It's just junk to fill out your house. I don't really understand why Japanese people, with as little space as they have in their homes, would fill it with things like that. I guess normal people don't fill it. That's for otaku and stuff. To have enough squishmallows lying around that it becomes a fire hazard. Made it! That was a weird bounce. That was a weird bounce. Just gonna answer this DM real quick. There we go, answered. 
as I slowly slide backwards. Rushy doesn't know if it's the cleaner they have in the factories or what, but every time he touches a squishmallow, he gets a rash. Maybe it's like when a vampire touches a cross or something. Holy water. Maybe just something about your nature, Rushy, is opposed to squishmallows. That would have been horrible right there, if I had fallen between the ground and the little purple, big purple fruits. Just no reason. Just happens. Did not save that. For the how many of time. Did not save it. I'm pretty sure you could put a gun to my head and I could uh, still do the jump across the four, the three purple fruits. Lost the ability to count. I've I've lost the ability to count numbers, but I can jump across the purple fruits now. And so that's some uh, some neurons well well reassigned their new job. <laughs> Play Imamushi. Oh yeah, that was a jump. Jumping over purple fruits is much more important for survival. Yeah, when am I going to need to count? That's what we got computers for. Computer can't jump over purple fruit. Don't make a task for this game. Don't prove me wrong. I don't need that right now. Please d Welcome back to Bananaville. This is probably the coolest jump so far, right here. Because of how you gotta just ride your momentum and bounce over there. It might be a minor allergic reaction to when, because even I did squish one of my fingers and palm got kind of red and felt like my hand was bloating a little or something. Not anything serious, definitely itched and was harder to make a fist. Reshi's not sure what he was doing at the beginning of that sentence. Am I okay? This is a long stream. This is a stream about learning patience. About me being a better person for you guys. <laughs> what was that noise? Did y'all hear anything? bomb. Oh, there it goes. I'm super delayed. I can't see what's going on on the, uh... Like, I'm as delayed as you guys are as far as, like, seeing what the whole stream looks like together. All I can see right now is my Emomushi window. I considered playing Emomushi in the OBS window, but it wouldn't let me control it. 
and I didn't feel like doing the uh, kind of override controls to do that, to make that work. You should raise the slang power limit to 999. But then you might end up on top of the wall. There's a wall you guys can't see. But it's very important to me that you guys don't get on top of it. You know, self-respect? If I had self-respect, I wouldn't be streaming. I would, like, be focused more on getting a real job that makes people respect me. I guess if you have self-respect, you don't need other people to respect you so much, do you? Maybe don't get self-respect, then. I mean, I've been streaming for how many years now? And I haven't done any of these frustrate the streamer games before. So it's really just overdue for me to do this to myself. Maybe years. Uh, started in September 2021? September or August? Somewhere around then? Oh no. So, 1, 22, 23. It's like two and a half years that I've managed to not do this to myself. My original, I, like, long, long ago, I thought, oh yeah, once I get good enough internet, I can actually, like, stream. What was that? I just, like, wrote up the wall. We're never gonna replicate that. Just pretend it didn't happen. Anyway, um, yeah, I was like, when I get good enough internet that I can stream at a proper resolution, maybe then I'll do getting over it. And I just decided not to. I think that this is less frustrating for me than getting over it. Because I'm a cute worm. I'd rather be a cute worm for five hours, six hours. You go on time to beat. This game probably says it takes like 30 minutes to beat. Because the people on time to beat are liars. Perfectly balanced emo mushi right now. Oh, never mind. There he goes. Five or six hours? That's much stream left? Maybe. I am clearly going insane now because I'm starting to like the way that this... Emo Mushi jumps. I'm starting to think it's kind of cool. Mechanically cool, or I mean, it looks cool. He's like a little ninja, he does little flips and doesn't afraid of anything.
He can't afford to be afraid of anything. Doesn't have time for that. We're gonna wait. We're gonna wait. <laughs> Insane. Yes. Probably. It's pretty clear I'm starting to lose it. I'm like, yeah, this worm's kind of cool. Don't you do it! Don't you... He did it. I told him not to, and he did it. Hit the wall and just bounced straight into the pit. Let me see if that was something important. Nope. <sighs> I think tomorrow's salmon run is on Boneyard? Bone Rattle? Whatever it's called? So that'll be fun. The worm disobeyed me. He should be punished. I think his punishment is kind of existing, though, so... Mission complete. Beep, 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 beep. We caught the bee. Why did everyone leave and Ruben joined? I don't know, because you're too cool for them. Or because they've been here for the past three hours. They need a little break from chatting to, like, eat food. Jump backwards, sure. All right, we're back up here. Why now? Universe is mysterious. It's full of questions we'll never have answers for. My left hand is starting to cramp. Well, that wasn't great. Ruben's been here for two years, and he likes the weird streams the most. That's good, because I, I need the weird streams. They keep it interesting. Like, Dave the Diver is not a bad game, but I've been playing it for a little while longer than I wish I was. They kind of make you do the sushi restaurant stuff a little bit longer than I would like. It would have been nice if they got... I mean, I guess there needs to be some sort of build up towards... And yeah, there are magical sea people. But, I'm much more enjoying the magical sea people part, but also it's at a part, point in the game where I'm like, I just want this to be done now. I want to know what this, uh, I haven't done weird streams too much, not recently, not, not since I threw everything off by, you know, getting a job, and then crashing and burning out of that job.
What is this thing that Sharky has uploaded? Lizard pictures. And a very fancy new apartment. I'll have to talk to her about that later. Two years paid off. I mean, I guess I just gotta, you know, get temp jobs every once in a while. Now I'll keep doing this. Because that was the conclusion I had while I was walking around in the woods yesterday, was that I'm still doing this because I want to, and I haven't quit when I really, really should have at this point, because I don't want to quit, and I don't do what I don't want to. And so quitting, I don't want to do that. And I'm going to keep doing this as long as I can. Which is, again, part of the point of playing Emomushi, is that this is a game about endurance and not giving up. I might give up, though, once it's been like an hour past when I want to eat dinner. Come on, come on, come on, save! No! Not gonna save it. Oh, wait, America. There was this saying back in, like, I want to say the 1960s in Britain, where you would, instead of saying rock and roll, you would say on the dole, because back at that time, most people who, that was a stereotype that people who were trying to become rock and roll musicians just didn't get jobs and they just stayed on welfare, <laughs> mooched benefits. Don't know how true that was. Made it. And unmade it. Am I streaming Friday? No, I'm going to be taking apart a swing set thing. I'm going to be being paid for my time on Friday. Because I need to do that to keep doing this. Success with that. I mean, the fact that anyone's willing to pay me for anything at this point is pretty much a success, as far as I'm concerned. You get paid a little, but if I got paid to stream, then I might do this eight hours a day, I don't know. I might treat it like a job. I think if I had held jump, we would have made that. It's still more consistent than it was. We're still getting across that little rock gap a little, a bit more consistently. And if that means we get a little bit less consistent on the uh, digestive tract here, it's fine. You can afford to fail that one a couple times. But if Ruben paid me to stream, you would need to make a lot of money. 
or else I would feel bad about taking your money. Like, this is part of that whole, I felt bad about what I did yesterday because I'm supposed to be older and wiser than all of y'all. It feels weird to take money from y'all. I'm supposed to be the one giving you all money. I'm supposed to be the walking wallet at this point. Whatever, who knows? Maybe that uh, park will call me back at some point and I can go. No, 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 no. Maybe that park will call me back and I can have a little job for the summer. I finally just noticed the harmony part in this song. Come on, little guy. Get down. And that was like five risky moves in a row. Harmony, Sploon reference! Oh no! There's a little like bang, 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 noise in the background. I'm not wearing headphones right now, so I'm hearing it through my really terrible speakers on my monitor. Could you, could you fall down please? Alright, we're going. <laughs> Reshi fell asleep. <laughs> Ruby, Ruben is going to go for a sec. I unfortunately will probably still be here when you get back. I was trying to slide down onto the bee. Right. So it's not a huge deal when we get up here anymore. I'm still not entirely sure what these oranges deal is other than like seem to eat my jump. I guess they represent sort of a reaction to the jump energy. Like everything else is sort of rigid compared to Emo Mushi. <coughs> There he goes. 
Worm. B. Bees do get a little bit more respect than worms do. It's pretty much only people who make their own compost that respect worms. Whereas you can talk about busy bees. They're sort of a metaphor for... Highly organized organizations. We're gonna... Nope, we didn't go through the bananas gap. I wonder how short the speed run of this is. I assume it's just a don't make any mistakes type of run, because I don't think there's much way to make the worm... to make the caterpillar go faster, other than I guess jumping, but that's real risky in places like this. Which I suppose would make for a good speedrun. You know, a little... Making easy parts hard, but making them very precise. Part of the little background harmony music has a bit that sounds like Ode to Joy in it. And now that I've heard it, it's a little distracting. Our poor little caterpillar must be really hungry at this point with all these, you know, jumps he's made. Saved it! Didn't save it. Did not save that. That was bad. He'll be fine. He has watermelon hair to eat. Just need to take a second to do so. And we're back to the beginning of the game. Imamushi speedrun is 3 minutes and 49 seconds. That makes me confident that we're close to the top. That it's got to be somewhere not too far after that weird geometry after the oranges. Because that weird geometry after the oranges does seem like it's testing, you know, your knowledge of how does the Imamushi bounce off of these specific angles. This is your test. Go. Compost people respect worms. Also the government of growing gen? On the other hand, the speedrun might have a lot of techniques like that, where you just somehow super jump really high but I don't know how I'm doing that. But that's like the second time I've done it. And they may just skip... 
all these worms raining down here. And here we go. Up the digestive tract. Totally gonna make it. Not gonna be hard. They put a lot of worms on a big special flooded field to drain it. Oh, I can adjust how I spin when I'm falling. If I hold an arrow key while I'm pressing the jump button, it changes the direction that Imamushi spins. Not sure how worms would drain a field, but I guess if they made the soil have more holes in it, then water wouldn't pool on the surface very much. Yes, the holes. That'd be it. Like, not so much a situation where the water is completely saturated the soil, but more a situation where there's water sitting on the soil and you don't want that to be happening. Yeah, I can see worms helping with that. And back to sitting. Ooh, that could have been bad. I think that Ruben just making his avatar do squats now. Sit, unsit, sit, unsit. I hate it when that happens. It's only happened like two times that I've absolutely destroyed myself on this section, but it's such an easy section that when you do fall from here, it feels real bad. How'd that bomb go? There we go. We've screwed up the purple fruits part. I'm going to switch hands again. I mean, that's one nice thing about this game. They don't let you can change the controls, but the fact that you can switch whether you're playing left-handed or right-handed. So I can give my left hand a break now, just like I gave my right hand a break like two hours ago.
Wonderful game design choice. Ruben can't unsit, so he just bombs. I think there's a little bit of a delay on the uh, commands. No, it just doesn't work. Okay, clearly I was doing this bit by muscle memory, so now I gotta relearn it with my right hand on the arrows. I mean, this could be a good thing, switching hands. Use what I've consciously learned to improve what I've been doing by... what I've been doing by muscle memory. Ruben has noticed how much better his English gets the worse mine becomes. Yeah, you get more practice, I get more tired. about as bad as it could be. Somehow I won the jump catch game, probably because of the bombs. I have no need of coins because I can just buy whatever I want anyway. I guess I would need coins if I wanted to spawn bombs the way you guys do instead of pressing the button for it. Not good times. Not good times right there. Rushy is going to go take a nap instead of falling asleep on his couch and injuring his back. Thanks for hanging out with me as long as you did. Care, don't die, don't throw at your back. Yeah. The bananas are smiling. Because they know that I'm going to keep them company for a long time. The bananas don't have to get lonely, then they'll be back. Mm. 
this hand, this hand is the one that stops holding the button. That was new. Not unexpected, but new. Don't do what Ruben does. Don't stay up super late watching me. It is not worth it. I think my brain is acclimating to certain parts of the song, and then, like, it makes so I hear other parts more. The apples are amazed I'm still trying to do this. They're like, whoa, look at this guy. Something's wrong with him. Let's not make any sudden moves or he might snap on us. I wish my brain were fast enough to, like, react to Imamushi's rotation so I could better control my landings. But unfortunately, I have to rely on timing. No, my back is in a state of trying to be good, yet not being and forward. What? I don't get that one. Other than if I don't pay attention to my posture, I will have back problems at the end of the stream. I'm getting more practice rotating the Imamushi than I do with, like, rotating Tetris blocks. I think I will eventually be able to rotate him so he lands flat fairly reliably. You know the simulacra whatever phenomenon where if you see three dots it turns into a face because that's what humans do? I'm starting to not see Imamushi's face as a face. It's just becoming a smear of pixels to me. Music is giving Ruben a headache. Yeah, I could imagine. The problem here, though, is I'm not going to turn it off because I find it's terribleness funny. 
Like, it's not terrible music. It's just... It's clearly meant to slowly drive you insane. By its repetitive nature, but it's hard to, like... Put a pin on any real melodies in it. Like, there's clearly the Ode to Joy rolling around in certain parts of it. But that's about it. That's about all the followable melody this song has going for it. There we go. We're back to the bees. A little sad that I got past the oranges first try and then now I can't even get past the oranges at all but we get another try I didn't press jump. I sort of panicked. Give me a second. I need to go get more water. Headphone warning for all who celebrate. I know what I must do, I just don't know if I'm strong enough to do it. Hmm. 
That is like the only good line from the Star Wars sequel trilogy, because it really captures George Lucas. It's really hammy, operatic writing that he got reeled in just enough in the original trilogy and didn't get reeled in nearly enough in the uh, prequel trilogy. It's like all the little, you know, Marvel quip lines. The world will forget them. I mean, the world will forget. I know what I must do. I just don't know if I'm strong enough to do it. They'll forget about that too, because at this point, Star Wars is a forgettable mishmash product of just so many different things that it doesn't really have any impact as far as I'm concerned anymore. But on the other hand, you know, people in their 20s unironically love the prequel trilogy. So what do I know? I just realized this game is full screen, but there's actually a little black bar on either side. My mouse can go over. Ruben just bombing himself. It's all good. At least you have bombs to play with. He has returned. I see that. I could be using this time to, like, write great, or read great bits of literature and all that. But instead, I'm just turning my brain into Imamushi. There isn't any toothpaste to be found. You need to go out and buy toothpaste. No, he does not. Do your parents need to go out and buy toothpaste? Hang on, let me I'm gonna lean back a little bit, get some back support, but I gotta actually speak up now and move the microphone a little closer. You know, that would probably be the consistent way to do this, is try to land on that upward slope. It's too late in the day, but yeah, they'll, they'll have to buy toothpaste at some point.
Once we get to this part, I start getting, like, Mario 64 vibes. I don't know why. Mario 64, just, its level design is so weird. Like, there's a lot of levels in Super Mario Galaxy that feel like they're just an obstacle course built for the sake of being an obstacle course, but pretty much everywhere in Mario 64, even the places that have something of a sense of place, still feel mostly like this is an obstacle course that someone built for people to challenge themselves by running across it. If the stream goes on 2 hours and 16 minutes more, then it will be Thursday. Uh, I can't make any promises, one way or the other. I do not know. Like, that jump just doesn't want to get consistent. Lay down, buddy. Okay, here we go. Almost back to the oranges again. I wish I had paid more attention to what I did the first time. Ow. My soul hurts just a little bit more than it did 10 seconds ago. How silly of me saying ow at a video game. The game doesn't cause me physical pain, right? It's not like sadness lights up the same parts of your brain as physical pain does. That would be crazy. I'm not actually that sad about it. Definitely not happy. You know, we are not in throwing for content territory here yet. Probably never. I feel like I've gotten enough content today. <laughs> I've made enough for people to mindlessly consume. Is streaming worse for people's brains than reality TV? Debate amongst yourselves. And by yourselves, I mean Ruben. Ruben has to debate by himself. Do you watch any reality TV, Ruben? I'd be surprised if you did, but maybe they got something good in the Netherlands. Does Eurovision count as reality TV? I mean, it kinda does. If you ask me. He watches none. That's what I expected. I don't think I've ever gotten into a reality TV show either. My mom really liked the first, like, two seasons of uh, American Idol. And so I kind of osmosed some of that from her.
We gotta kind of land, if we can land more or less flat on that center rock, then the jump isn't that bad. It's repeatable. Probably shouldn't bring up topics I got nothing to say about. I, I got nothing to say about reality TV. I don't watch it. I've never watched it. Hello, past me. I'm gonna pass you now. So that I can surpass you. Alright, we're back. We're back to the, if you mess up, you go to the very beginning of the game part. That was close, that was close. Personal best. This is terrifying. Why did he like launch diagonally downwards? I tried to take advantage of some something like coyote time. I don't know. I don't know. That's not how you do that jump! You do not get to the very edge, not on that jump. Bye. Have a good night, Ruben. Try to get some sleep. Don't let the emo mushies haunt you too badly. VOD. Uh, will YouTube let me upload a probably six hour VOD? We'll find out. That was a struggle. It will. Bye. 
if I'm lucky, there won't be any copyright claims, and I can make this into a Creative Commons licensed video. And so people can take this six hours and waste their life on clipping out the little bits that are good or that will embarrass me. Speedrun strats. Not speedrun strats. Yeah! Woo! Very lucky. I mean, very skilled. Very good at the video game. Did they just put all these other ghosts to make me feel less lonely? I mean, I guess it's working. Man, I sure hope that I fell towards the last jump of the game. I really hope that that's about it. That was needlessly risky, but you know what's what's a video game if not something you take needless risks in sometimes. Where's the fun in playing it safe all the time? Back down to the bananas! Hi again, bananas. Bye again, bananas. Final banana. The purple fruit are sort of all bark, no bites. It's like, oh man, physics objects. That's going to be pretty difficult to deal with with this weird jumping. Turns out, no, the actual dangerous physics object is the one that reacts to my jumps, not to my weight. That would have been a sick move, but also really embarrassing if I fell for it. Like, fell because of it. All right, back to the oranges, hopefully. This little jump right here is scary. Okay, back to have you mastered slopes?
nail fighting actually kind of tricky even once you sort of understand it platforming action Too far forward that time. Or was it too far back? All right, we're back. Please don't let it be a gap here. Okay. Oof. They could have put a gap right there. It would have been totally my fault for falling. But they were nice, and they didn't. Nice-ish. What do these red rocks mean? Do they mean I'm halfway there? That's how these games go sometimes. You think, oh man, I'm almost done. I've almost done it. And then it turns out, no, that was the halfway point. Keep going, idiot. At least you've almost got the strawberry jump consistent. We've got a plan now. We jump from here, we stop rotating, and then we do the upslope jump across. And then I miss that jump entirely! Okay, nice seeing you again, Bananas. Seems you're still doing well. Okay, 
Back to the bees. Are the bees the only other, like, animal life in this realm? Just me and my millions of clones and the bees. refresh this so it doesn't get too far behind and here we go the I thought this was almost the end part and I was wrong dead wrong more what I expected to happen. First time I fell from there. First time for that. They wouldn't put the jump in the game if you had a chance, didn't have a chance to not. If you can't fail the jump, there's no reason to put it in the game. So obviously, if you have to jump there, it's possible to fail it. I just thought for a second that this banana might not have a face. But no, it does. He has a face. Thankfully, we got that bush to uh, act as a visual marker on where to jump here. Now I just gotta actually input the key commands correctly. Hey, you know who we have not seen in a while? Apples. And remember when those bananas were sort of difficult a little bit, kind of? Like four hours ago? Alright, back to the bees. We're getting pretty good at getting to the bees. I'm not gonna make that jump. We're just we're just gonna wait. We're gonna wait patiently. We're gonna be super patient little emo mushies. While we question whether that's an eye or a nose. Is he looking straight at me? I don't know anymore. Thank you, B, for being there for me. Oh, that almost looked like a skip. Wouldn't that be wonderful if we could skip some parts? <laughs> Hmm. 
Not the worst fall today. Not by a long shot. I think I got about another hour of this in me. And then we might have to call Throw the towel. Admit defeat. Please lie down. Okay, the amazing physics defying oranges. We've overcome the amazing physics defying oranges. So, the thing on these jumps is you don't press a direction until you're jumping. You do a neutral jump. And I don't know why that works, but it does. As for this, no idea why I've made that sometimes and not others. All right, get serious. We're back to the Red Rocks. It's a potato. And we bounce on the potato. I don't like this. Please stop. No. No. Uh, we're back to the bees. Every time they introduce more physics, this just gets harder and harder. And back to Bananaville. Hey, Super Sumo. You saw the potato for five seconds. Well, I mean, I saw it for only like ten, so... And that's like the second time I failed the purple fruits. The apple looks like it's rotating, and I know it's not. Man, at the, beginning, at the beginning of this game, I felt so slick being like, yeah, you just rock it across the second smaller apple. That's just a cool piece of platforming. I'm sure it's not going to get much worse than that. And then we get this, where you have to jump, let go of the direction, and then press the direction again. It's almost like a re-grab. Way more forgiving than that, obviously.
You're gonna get back to lurking again. Well, like I said a few minutes ago, I'm probably got like another hour of this in me. And then I'll if I go along into that my back will regret it. some sort of like little Illuminati eye type thing going. It's honestly a good symbol for lurking. The all-watching eye, you never know who's lurking. You never know who's watching from the shadows. I want to drink water there, but I'm afraid I'm going to slip off the edge if I do that. A little slime guy lurking. He does look a little bit like a jello mold. I'm going to miss that little rock eventually, unless I beat this game right now. Almost got snaked. But we did not get snaked. I don't know what makes those jumps doable sometimes and not other times. And I'm probably never going to figure it out. Look how fast we got back to the potato. Look how fast we screwed that up. Here we go. Barely lost any progress. Absolutely fine. <laughs> We're not going to try to take a shortcut there, we're just going to go slow-ish and steady. Ooh, almost skipped a platform. And snakes. Welcome back to the ground. This game dares to ask, what if Sonic the Hedgehog were really slow and a caterpillar? and yellow.
and his only desire was to go up. That's all he wants, only up. This game's gotta have shortcuts or something somewhere. Now I'm just too dumb or cowardly to find them. got that almost consistent. This part, not so much. At least on the last orange, we have sort of the visual signal of his spots. You just jump on that last set. Plus, we've been to the section enough times that there are now ghosts. All right, almost back to Red Rocks. Red Rocks and potatoes. Just like Mama used to make. We finally screwed up that jump. It's happened. It's now a thing. It's out of my system now, except it's not. It's going to happen again, probably. I made that jump just to go a little bit faster, but I gotta wait for the B. We missed our frame rule. We missed our B bus. figure out how those super jumps work then maybe someday we could uh you know just boost our way all the way up like we could do one right here somehow i wonder if the speed run does any like weird glitches or if they just play the game normally This game seems so simple that it wouldn't be really surprising to find it has some weird glitch tech. But of course no one wants to watch someone play the game the first time with them already knowing that, oh yeah, there's this glitch that can just launch you straight up. Maybe not the first time. Though it was kind of part of the appeal of only up was watching people find glitches that, like, you adjusted the frame rate to a certain point and you jumped on this one particular weird thing, and then you got launched, like we just got launched there. Like, they had this super specific skip where you get a dragon wing and you hit it on a certain couple polygons and it flings you way high up, and then eventually they found something with, like, this T-Rex that made that look like not even a skip at all. That took you from maybe about the halfway point to above the map. Like, you go higher than the end! And you have to fall back down to it. Good times watching people run. Watching people speed run. Only up last summer. I 
All right, we're not gonna mess this up this time. That was a one-time thing. If I just had confidence, I could skip that platform. But I don't. And so we're not gonna. I'm just gonna keep going. All right, Red Rocks. Going to Mars. Gonna grow some potatoes. Gonna feed Matt Damon. Matt Damon goes unfed. Come on, little guy. You can do this. I don't think they would introduce potatoes right at the end. Potatoes don't seem like a right at the end fruit. Potatoes are only fruit in French, but still. That was not my fault. <laughs> that was a glitch. Not a fun speedrunny glitch. That was a... I mean, we've seen him get caught like that before, you know? These things happen. Sometimes you just want to sit still and slide slowly down a slope. As the camera zooms in. Whatever. The emotional damage is done. We can keep going now. This is not... the best thing I've ever done with my time. But again, I kind of owe it now to the internet to play one of these rage games. Ooh, that was a smooth one. He didn't slip back or nothing. Imamushi looks like he could have been a soda mascot in the late 90s. Alright, so we do these jumps with our head about halfway across the flat part. Why does that work? Why do we go much farther that way? I don't know!
Maybe I need to kind of fling myself at the uh, first red rocks. Woof. Very close to getting snaked there. Alright, now I'm just being my own worst enemy. There we go, there we go. Snakes. Hello, Apple. Hello, first apples that are kind of an obstacle. I'm back, bananas. I'll probably see you again. This is still the coolest jump in the game. Because of how you just can't do it as one jump. You've got to do both jumps together. I gotta check my phone in a second to see if something important came up. There we go. We're safe here. Uh, looks like nothing important. Yeah, nothing important. We got so stuck on that strawberry. Good times. Kinda looks like Imamushi has wings right now. I kinda wish Imamushi had wings right now. Welcome back, Reshi. I have also returned to the bananas. Say bye to the bananas for now. Buenos noches, bees. <laughs> My voice is starting to go. I really shouldn't stream for this long. This is one of the songs they play for you in hell.
There we go. That's the second time we messed that up. <laughs> Rip. A little bit, yeah. That was a little painful. It is pretty great how on this part, almost every time I ride the bee across, I get to see someone going by, downwards. I really don't know how much more of this I have in me. <laughs> oh, man, her head now. I wonder if there are any, like, Kaizo Mario style hacks for this game yet. Like, let's make it worse. Let's just make it worse. The Miku in my heart says Gambare. Too bad Miku's not real and she can't tell me what to do. See that, that right there, that was some sort of super jump. I'm sure there's some, all this like amazing tech in this game that just, I have no idea how to do it. Huh. So I'm trying to make Imamushi land on his head. And the game won't let you do that. Oh man, and then once this is done, I gotta go in the VOD and see if the changes I made to the Stream avatars, make it so you can actually read. The options during boss battles. See, there was another one going by, downwards. And we've added one more to the pile. I mean, I may need to take a break to go eat, get food. I don't know. Maybe I can keep doing this. I'm not doing significantly worse yet. I think I'm still getting better, honestly. I'm afraid if I don't beat this now, I'll never do it. On the other hand, the, sum, the sum total of all knowledge I've gained today is Imamushi.
but I kind of don't want to stream this tomorrow because I want to play Salmon Run. I think I just did tech to go really, really fast, but in the wrong direction. And I did it again. Thank you, B, for being there to stop me from falling again. So don't press backwards until I'm in the air. B, MVP, forever. The bee can only catch me so many times. You know what? That's just how it is. Does this worm have a voice? Does Emo Mushi make noises? Or am I just hallucinating them? Sometimes he sounds kind of like Young Link. You know what I just realized? Five hours into this? I should have put a timer on the screen! Then people tuning in can be like, how many hours has he been doing this? Five! Only five? Yes, only five. He's gotten this much better in only five hours. I've become better at the game, but worse as a streamer. Like, what's the cost of becoming good at emo mushy game? Everything? Yeah, I just did that. I didn't wait for the bee. Saved it. For certain quantities of saved. I think I'm starting to understand how this game reads slopes! And then I do something like that. It seems to be based on what the slope is like underneath Imamushi's head. Phil wants to say the noise when Mushi crawls along are its voice, but he's being censored by Twitch. 
And in reading that, I almost slid backwards off of the platform I was on. So yay, Twitch. Twitch does not have my back! But maybe Twitch chat does. What was that? I'm kind of terrified to find out what is on the top of this climb. Because it won't be worth it. It's never worth it in these games. It's like, here, have your two dollars back. That's your reward for getting to the top. You just earned back two dollars for seven hours of your time. Nope. Nope. We're back to the bananas. There's that one watermelon. He's like the last scion of his species. Maybe he and the, uh, the strawberry have like a club. Like, we're the only ones of our kind, so I guess we gotta be only ones of our kind together. Optimistic to think this will only take seven hours. I could go on YouTube and see how many hours it took koto -san to do this. It's kind of her fault I'm playing this right now. I mean, that this has been on my Steam wish list. It's 100% my fault that I'm playing this. I chose this. I chose to play this today. It's not like I woke up and decided to play this either. No, I was planning this since yesterday. Classic move, blaming the dog. Sometimes dogs make you want to play a video game. Back to the apples. The first obstacle of this game that I came up with an actual strategy for beating. The jumping backwards based on slope still doesn't seem super consistent. But it's probably, again, because the game is figuring out what the slope is based on some sort of, like, average of the area underneath. Imamushi's head.
I don't know. Maybe I should grab a snack. Nah. Nah, we're gonna make it this time. Stupid risks and all. The wiggling backgrounds do not help. Not saying like a gameplay sense, I'm saying like a am I losing it sense. Cause I feel like this is gonna be like when you play Guitar Hero too much. And then for the next like hour or so my vision's just gonna be like Imamushi based. Got a whole little, uh, train going on here. B-train. Okay. We can get back to the oranges. And we should be okay. Get back to the actual difficult part. Except for this jump. That jump's kind of a nightmare. He really does control more like a slug than a caterpillar. On that jump in particular. Because you gotta land very solidly with his base touching the ground. Or else he doesn't stick, and then you fall off. I've got nothing more to say about this game. Other than, I just don't think that this is a satisfying endpoint. Like, I don't know when to stop. Was that the very beginning just now? Yeah, yeah, the welcome sign is the very beginning. Because every game like this has to have that. Yeah, 
can't spell stop without top. Ugh. I can't argue with that. Because I don't have the mental energy left to do so. Like, are the red rocks the halfway point? Are they the one-third point? I don't know. The speedrun taking only three minutes suggests they're the halfway point. But I've done some things where I've flung myself with such speed that I'm pretty sure you can make things go a little wacky in this game if you really know what you're doing. So it's possible that speedrun just like they get to a certain point and then they hit some weird slope and launch themselves to the top. They just had to make the bees not line up on a cycle. You know, this section right here is very Jump King-y, in that you have to sort of bounce backwards to make the jump. Oh, that was fast. Okay, I think that's how it's supposed to work, that you sort of slide off the edge and fall. And the fact that I got through it two times without that happening was just sort of a fluke. So here's the actual very beginning of the game, for anyone who's not seen it so far. It says Emomushi. It tells you arrow key and spacebar. And that's how the game works. Figure it out. Have you ever had something that you wanted so badly that you would do anything to get it? If only I knew that little child's complete flubbing of that line. It's a pretty funny meme. 
even if it was very mean-spirited. Oh yeah. This game is the definition of living deliciously. No, it's not. It's really not. Maybe those aren't even bananas. Maybe they're made of cheese. And I've been misinterpreting what they're made out of this whole time. Thinking those were like overly ripe spots, but they're actually holes in the cheese bananas. That was the section we got stuck on the longest, was the strawberry jump. Though this part still is not consistent, like, at all. Apparently Suica game has multiplayer DLC, it does! They finally got a way to make money off of it. Novice, or Phil doesn't think it can link to the Hellraiser scene that he's referencing. Okay, well. That makes it a little bit more sensical that this is a Hellraiser reference. Because, yeah. I'm sure this is someone's personal hell. As far as frustrating platformer games go, this one's not too bad. Make more frustrating platformer games with cute protagonists, and I'm sure the genre will get more popular. I would much rather play as Emo Mushi than Guy in a Pot, or Dude in a Loincloth, or child of nondescript gender from the favelas who when you go into first person mode you see inside of their skull Can I get stuck there? Aw, oh, nope. They playtested their game. Can't get stuck in the upright position. Okay, now I'm just like... I can make that jump. I don't need to bounce and roll anymore. I, I understand how this game works a little bit better than I did. Five and a half hours ago.
Okay, have I perfect have I perfectly balanced him this time? Is he ever going to fall? Maybe the wind off of the ghosts will make him scooch out of the way. I think this is... You know what? Yeah, I think I'm going to stop. I might try this again later. Rashi doesn't know how I'm still playing. He would have ended hours ago. Again, this was my punishment for... for not being the kind of streamer I want to be yesterday. And so... No, I didn't beat this game. Not yet. I will try again. Don't forget to save your game! <laughs> Pretty sure there's no save feature in this game. Pretty sure. You're just supposed to beat it in one go. Um, Reshi's got a raid target. That works for me. Who are, who, who are you and Phil and like three anonymous bots gonna raid? Our Haven. Let's do that. They are playing Pokemon Unite. So sure, yeah, let's go send you over to hang out with Our Haven. Maybe double his viewership. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, get this thing ready to say goodbye. Have a good one. I'll be back tomorrow playing... A game that I can't remember the name of. Sam and Run. Wow. Yeah, I'm, my brain's fried. I'm done. I'm tired. Anyway, have fun. Go say hi to our haven for me. Bye.